Mobile robots work quite differently to robot arms. Designed to move about from a fixed location, these were initially guided by human operators by remote control, but are now more common to design to move about autonomously, following programmed instructions and reacting to their environment through sensors, touch sensors, heat and infrared sensors, light sensors, sound sensors, ultrasonic distance sensors, digital compasses, GPS and cameras. There are a huge range of robots available now for education. For FT2, you have the B-Bots, which can be programmed from keys on their backs, Blue Bots, which can be programmed from computers or tablets, the ProBot, which is more complex and has an LCD screen to display the ended commands, and it can be used to teach the basics of repeats, but the touch and light and sound sensors can only trigger events, so there's no opportunities for branching commands. It is, however, a great turtle device. With an attached pen and butcher's paper, it can be used to create wonderfully engaging repeating patterns. Now, Ozbots are very small robots. They can be used to detect the color of lines below them and follow these, even lines displayed on tablets. And programming these to perform dance moves and other activities can be a lot of fun. Now, the Sphero range of robots include the Sparrow itself, or this is the um, Spark version. There's the BB-8s, which have been made famous in the Star Wars, um, latest Star Wars movies. And we also have the Ollie range, um, which are a little bit more robust. But they can all be programmed using various software tools. But their accuracy does make their use beyond F2 a bit problematic, but not impossible. They're fantastic for doing light painting activities, and I've also added an example into this week's Student Solutions to give you an idea of where you might be able to use um, the Sphero range um, in more project-based approaches. Now the challenge for these simple robots is in contributing to the solution of problems through projects. Moving away from learning how to use the robots or ICT for their own sake, towards creating solutions to problems with these robots. Now, with students in after 2 only generally learning sequence, the solution to problems will tend to be where robots make their way from one location to another. Delivering a message, carrying an object, uh, leading a lost child, etc. And the degree of difficulty comes through abstraction that students can develop around their solutions. Can it carry different objects, uh, follow different paths, draw different patterns or shapes? Um, now, the WeDo kits <coughs> do allow students to be more creative and actually construct their own robots. And as kits, they also open a wide range of automation solutions that students can then create solutions to. Uh, warning systems, communication tools, transportation solutions, animatronic performances, creation of new toys and games, and musical instruments. Another key aspect in F2 is for students to be able to describe their robots as digital systems. Something that has inputs, it may be through some buttons or sensors, a processor, which is the computer's brain, and outputs, the moving wheels, the flashing lights, making sounds. All the things that they can control and make do through giving the device instructions. Now, we can also use instruction cards that students can lay out in sequences, um, and these can assist students in recognizing how these symbols are data, and that they can mean words to us, but also digital instructions to a robot. Now, from, F to, well, from three to six, we have more complex robots able to make decisions based on inputs and perform repeated tasks. You know, the Dash Dot system, um, this is Dash, uh, is a very robust robot, and so it can be useful in F2, but it also has the ability to be programmed and to respond to a wide range of sensors. Now, there's also Additional attachments, such as the xylophone, 
and a whole range of other tools that can be um, attached to the devices. There's a catapult and a few others. But fundamentally, they're not really designed to be used much beyond the solutions provided. And we really want to explore tools where students can create their own solutions rather than just utilize the solutions envisaged by the robot designers. Now, there are hundreds of robots about. Um, the educational, edu edutech sort of industry has exploded with providing robot kits for education. And we're going to look at just five at the moment, which cover the range from, um, of types of robots that are available and lead into increasing complexity. So, the first ones that we have are the ones you're hopefully now quite familiar with, our Edison robot. There's also the Lego Mindstorm robot series, the VEX series, which is very popular in the United States, the MakerBot series, and a whole range of Adreno-based robot kits. Now, the Edison kits are nicely self-contained. They have built-in sensors, wheels, and students can create programs and load them onto their robots to see how they perform the instructions. They're a little better than some pre-made robots. You know, there are attachment points for Lego, and they can use these to create other solutions to problems. Now, the Mindstorm kits are usually very, very flexible. Um, with a yellow controller brick and all the sorts of Lego attachments you could add to them. But they've become a little bit less intuitive uh, more recently and named towards the commercial market, with students generally building a small range of models from very complicated, detailed instruction sets. It is still possible for students to use Mindstorms in a flexible, creative way, but in practice, that doesn't tend to be happening as much as it used to. The VEX kits, the set are very popular in the United States, <coughs> with different levels from plastic to metal, and are based on a Meccano-style uh, construction environment. Uh, giving them great flexibility again. Now the MakerBots are similar in style metal robots, um, but they can also be used to create plotters and musical instruments and 3D printers. So that gives them a level of sophistication for student solutions beyond most other robotic system and kits. Now the MakerBots are still built around an Arduino type device, um, but without the need to solder and do all those other aspects. Now it is possible though to purchase extremely low cost robots through Adreno based systems, um, less than $20 or $30, but you do need to put them together yourselves. And that can be complicated, but a great design technology activity. And essentially, if you attach a few motors, a couple of sensors to an Adreno, you've got a robot. Um, and this can be done very, very cheaply and build up a whole range of different types of kits over a short period of time. Now, from 7 to 10, we will generally be extending students' focus to the automation of algorithms and to data collection through the robotic solutions, with an emphasis on the coded software rather than the physical devices, identifying and removing weeds from a garden using image detection algorithms, detecting balls and moving them towards goals, as is done in RoboCup competitions, or finding their way through complex buildings to rescue trapped survivors, the emphasis being much more on the algorithm develop to avoid obstacles and identify the victim than on how the robot itself is constructed. But students can also develop the capacity to design the user experience with robot devices. Uh, what, would be, what would it be like to be served by a robot waiter? Programming the device and testing it out with clients at the tuck shop. Creating robot devices to assist people with disabilities is always popular. And there are a wide range of automation problems that can be, occur in the community. The local nursing home or childcare centres would have many. But the school itself offers more than enough problems to be solved by creative students. Now finally, there's also robotic system simulations, software that students can use to design, build and test their automation solutions without the need for robotic kits. While in no way comparable to the experience of creating and using actual robotic devices, they can provide a solution to students lacking resources. As always, the focus should be on solving problems through their understanding of digital technologies. And the more types of solutions that students can come to understand 
During their 11 years of digital technologies, the more complex and sophisticated these solutions will be able to be.